What you're about to see is an excerpt from the Fronos Photo Guide to building your online presence. Now, if you'd like to watch the full version for free, head on over to fronosphoto.com branding. But for now, enjoy this excerpt. So people have read all about you in your about page, but what about if they want to contact you? Your contact page is extremely important to have on your site. Well, what information should be there at the very least to make sure that people contact you? Now, having a page that's separate, you could have your about page slash contact together because if they read about you and they want to contact you, you could do that. I personally have a contact page that's separate, but let's dive into some other ones that people have right here. So we've got, oh, look at that. Justin Lawrence lists their phone number uh, and, and, and uh, address right up here in the menu bar. Not a menu bar, that's a hello bar that you can add on Squarespace that pops down from the top. So at any point, let me see if I scroll back, will, will it be up there? Yep, still up there. So let's go back to the contact page. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. On his page, he's got name. So he's asking for the first name, last name. I just think it's all right if you ask for a name. Could be first name, last name, that's perfectly fine. You can see that it has an asterisk there, that means you must use it. And it has an email address here, you have to ask for people's email addresses because you need to know how to get in touch with them. Because with the contact form, this is generating, so this is one of those things, if you make your email public on a website, it's possible that a crawler on the internet could find it and start spamming you with, uh, to that email address. So a contact page makes people fill it out and then Squarespace or whatever you're using for the contact form will then send it to where you designated it to go uh, through email. So here there, it asks for phone number and messages. Like, of course they're gonna put a message there, but it's not mandatory. Actually, a message should probably be mandatory because if you just have their name and email address, you don't know why they're contacting you. So on this page, there's a couple of ways to be contacted. You've got your email, you've got your phone number, you also have your mailing address, which is kind of questionable to have on the site. I don't know that that's important unless this is physically a location of an office or a P.O. box, I really don't think it's necessary, uh, especially for a photographer or a videographer, to have your mailing address there, unless people are mailing, if they're gonna mail you a check, you're gonna tell them to mail you a check and where to mail it to. So that's something that I would maybe take off of a contact page. Um, you also have the phone number, people are gonna call you. Are you gonna answer the phone professionally? I know that depending on my mood, I'm gonna answer the phone one way or another, either happy that somebody's calling me or not so happy that I'm being interrupted. So what number are you calling? Like, is it a separate number that comes in that you always know that it's a business call? Because the last thing is like, hello, and people are like, uh, did I reach the right number? So that's the thing. Are you gonna answer the phone the same way each time? That's something to keep in mind. Um, other ways to do it, they submit it. Like, let's go to mine real quick. Basic information, I want the subject, I want the message, I want their email, and I want their name. I make them do that, they hit submit. I don't have my phone number on here because I don't want people calling me. I want them to contact me first, and then I can talk to them. Uh, most of the time, people are more willing to send you an email first, and from the email, I then try to get them on the phone to help them with whatever question uh, that they may need answered. I also have a dedicated button down here for contact, which you can see would launch if I clicked it, it would launch the email program that somebody has to allow them to send me a message through my email. That's an option to have. I have both on my site. They can use the form or they can use the other button. Whatever way they contact me is all I care about. That is all that matters, is that they get in touch with me. Then we have this as a sample page. We can see that this is, a, what does it say, Salty Spirit Photography. It's built on a Smug Mug site. If you're gonna use a free site like Smug Mug, or Squarespace, you have the ability, when you do pay for the Squarespace, to turn off the logo. I don't want to advertise them on my site. I don't want Smug Mug being the first thing that I see on, on somebody's site if I'm gonna pay them, even if it's free. And that will lead me into something else in a second. Uh, squarespace.com slash fro, use my code please, that helps me out. But on this page, there is no contact. All you have here is a phone number, a phone number. I, I want, people want to contact you. They wanna contact you, so give them an email. Give them social buttons. That's what's important here too, is there's a different way you can get in touch with Justin right here, is through all of these social buttons. Now, do we see how it's jusphoto.com? That matches his domain name. Remember those AOL and AIM addresses that are free? It's not very professional 
to have one of those and be like, Jared Poland at Gmail. No, I have that one. <laughs> I, don't, I even think the Gmail is becoming less and less important these days. It's more, it's perceived as more professional than Jared Poland at AOL.com. The last thing I want to see on a professional website is at AOL.com. My personal choice, my personal preference is not to have that. Now, just like this guy has, he's got Justin. Uh, so jusphoto.com, that is his domain name. So then he can have his own email address that way. Now this is something that Squarespace lets you do. If you sign up for a year, they give you a free domain name. So jaredpolin.com, I could have bought it through them when I signed up for a year. It's gonna save me $13.99 or $12.99 at the time, but it also allows you to own your name. It allows you to own your at so-and-so.com so that your email and, and the branding goes from everything that you have, from your logo to the web address to your email so that people can use you. Now, if you want to just use a free email, Gmail is still the way to go. It's still perceived as being okay and professional to use. Just be careful. I don't think Yahoo looks good. I don't think uh, at... AOL or AIM looks good. We're going all the way back to Lycos.net. I don't even know if those, those work anymore. But the, the, the main point here is that people can get in touch with you, and these are the ways you can do it. Social media, you can put a phone number there if you really want people to contact you. You can put a mailing address, though I don't know why you would have a mailing address there unless they're trying to find, unless you're a business and, you're, and you're, you have a location that is open for business, then you would want to have your, your mailing address because then people would be able to find you and show up there. So if you're making an e-commerce site for a store, you can say physical location, then you could do that. I know I've talked a lot about the photography aspect of it, but in the business aspect of it, you could make sure that you have your address there. Uh, definitely try not to do what this person did, aka make this a JPEG or a graphic or something that is how to contact them. Have a contact page. Pretty simple to do. Squarespace, Squarespace makes it easy to have a contact page. I didn't even dive in here to show it to you. So let me go to pages, find where my contact is right here. I go in here, I can simply edit it. Settings, I can make changes. I can have all the different things that I want right here. This is it. I can, I can do this like this. What else do we have? Edit. You can pick and choose different things that you want to put on your page. And uh, that's it. Look at this. Name, email address, subject line. Say I don't want the subject line. Or let's add something and then take it away. Uh, well, why would they want my website? Like, why would my website want to be down here? Oh, well, maybe somebody wants to submit something, a link. Ah, there we go. So if I want people to submit something to me, if you're saying submit a headshot, submit something, a link to it, you could ask for it right there. That's pretty cool. I didn't even know that. Well, I knew it was there, but now if I want to get rid of it, I don't want it anymore. I can hit the trash can to confirm and it's gone. That's why I absolutely love using this WYSIWYG type of thing with Squarespace because it's there. It's easy to do. It's quick to do. You don't need to know very much. And that's it for the contact page. We're going to roll out of this into something else right now. So I hope you enjoyed that excerpt from the Frontos Photo Guide to Building Your Online Presence. Now, if you'd like to watch the entire guide for free, head on over to fronosphoto.com branding where you can download the entire guide.